Hi everyone, my name is Emily Pedrazzi and today's AP Psych lesson will be going over how to approach AP multiple choice questions. We'll have some psychology specific tips, but most of the tips are specifically related to just how to tackle multiple choice since it's not, even if you know the content, sometimes you may forget and you have to use this information to fill in the gaps. So let's get started. Just share my screen. Great, so starting off, if you haven't yet, make sure to follow at think on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for more updates on AP-related content and just a bunch of cool stuff overall. And in this slideshow, we will specifically be covering a breakdown of the exam, the general multiple choice question strategies, the psychology multiple question strategies, the multiple choice question skills and some exam examples and practice and we'll work on a conclusion towards the end so just to give you a breakdown of what the psychology exam is like there will be a hundred multiple choice questions which will take 70 minutes and be worth two-thirds of your ap score and after that there will be two free response questions which will take 50 minutes and be 33 percent of your ap score Breaking down the, you, you may have seen this in the past, but it's always good to really nail that content in. This is for the multiple choice questions specifically. So first we'll have cognitive psychology, which is worth 13 to 17%. Clinical psychology, which is 12 to 16%. Motivation, emotion, and personality, which will be 11 to 15. Scientific foundations of psychology at 10.4. And the biological basis of behavior at, from eight to 10. After that, we also have social psychology from 8 to 10, developmental psychology, 7 to 9%, learning, also 7 to 9%, and sensation and perception. So going into this, do you have a unit that you're most excited for? My favorite unit personally has to do with developmental psychology and social psychology, although I also enjoy theories of personality. So moving on to general multiple choice questions, Developmental, biological, ooh, those are all super fun. I love de developmental. I'm still working on some biological stuff myself, actually doing a research project on that. So general multiple choice question strategies. So you should use the process of elimination. And if you guess, pick one letter and stick to it. Like just write D all the way down if you're unsure of the answers. Just keep it consistent so you're more likely to get more correct. And you should also skip around difficult questions to avoid wasting time. Give yourself time at the end to think of them, think about them, and just go back once you're done with all the easy questions. After that, you should correct your answer. Like, note that correct answers are typically longer and more specific, which we will go into some of these examples in the future. Uh, you should look for answers like in questions that answer the question that you're currently on. This doesn't happen as much in AP tests, but it may help you just in general trying to find an answer. Previous questions or questions like in the future may hint to an answer for certain questions. I think that covered a lot of them, but if you know any more, like please share them. It'd be great for all of us. Moving on to psychologic or psychology multiple choice questions. So this applies to all APs, but it's important for psychology, especially just because of how multiple choice heavy it is. You should take practice tests to get a feel for like what the multiple choice questions on the exam are like, just to see a realistic perspective of them. After that, pace yourself. Note that it's an average of 42 seconds per question. It's fine to take longer or take less based on the question, but just keep that in mind as you're answering. You should also be logical. Pay attention to the specific wording and answer meanings. Like you may notice like the root of a word or a stem. You may notice something like that in the word. Just try to break it if it kind of defines itself. That's a great tip if you're unsure of an answer. And after that, just fill in all the answers. There's no guessing penalty and that applies to all AP subjects. It'll only hurt you if you don't fill in. Just at least guess on everything if you don't know. 
now specifically in multiple choice question skills. So according to the College Board website, the AP Psychology multiple choice questions ask students to do the following. Define and explain content from a range of course topics and apply skills of concept application, data analysis, and scientific investigation. These are skills that you'll be using during multiple choice questions alongside just what we've already went over and knowing the content. So some examples in practice. We have a few questions lined up here. So according to evolutionary psychologists, women tend to be con concerned with what, wow, with whether mates will devote time and resources to a relationship. Men place less in emphasis on physical attractiveness. Women place more emphasis on sexual fidelity. Men are biologically driven to have multiple partners. Can you use any skills to form an educated guess here? Anything that we've talked about in the past? Give you guys a few seconds to get some responses. Just do like A, B, C, or D, or one, two, three, or four, just based on the strategies we've gone over. Any guesses? A? Okay. Let's have a look. The answer is A. The answer is longer and more specific than the others. It has, it's significantly longer than all the other answers, as you can tell, and there's a lot more keywords in there. Moving on to the next question. We have Milgram's famous shock experiment demanded obedience from its participants and demonstrated the existence of what psychological phenomena? The power of social learning, the power of peer pressure, the power of authority, the power of motivation, and the power of reinforcement. This one has five answers, so just A, B, C, D, or E, or just one through five. Can you use any skills to form an educated guess here? Five? Logical, okay. Do you have any idea for an answer on this? Demand obedience. Okay. Now let's have a look. The answer for this one was actually three. Authority and obedience kind of go hand in hand. Reinforcement is more reinforcing concepts, like, which wasn't explicitly stated here. It's more, they expect obedience, so authority must be followed in terms of having that handled. You can do this by logically working out each scenario. Social learning, you're not really learning anything considering they considering it's just related to obedience. It's not, not learning, it's just following orders. Peer pressure. That's that's another good answer. I could see how you could have gotten peer pressure. Just because the pressure to obey, although this wasn't in a group setting, but you couldn't have known that without background information. And then the power of authority. After that, power of motivation, which doesn't really make sense as an answer here. And then reinforcement, which I understand how you could get that. But overall, this should be dialed down to either peer pressure or authority. Next up, we have Richard's parents insist on taking away his privileges whenever his grades go down. What is this an example of? Can you use any skills here to figure out the answer? Let's see, we got guess for negative punishment, guess for positive reinforcement. Okay. And let's see the answer here. So the answer here, we have a few visuals to kind of direct your eyes. So Richard's parents take away his privileges, which if you think in, there's multiple ways to think about this. Negative as in something bad happened or positive as in something good happening. You could think of it like that, which may confuse the thing a little bit. But you can negative as in moving, positive adding. So they're adding that and they're reinforcing it. Oh, they're removing it and they're reinforcing it, sorry. Selective attention doesn't make sense as an answer. Positive reinforcement, you could have gotten that one when I was studying, when I was initially learning, that's what I originally got. 
and negative punishment, which also makes sense, but not quite. Just use process of elimination based on wording and logic in this situation. So next up, we have introspection. So introspection as a cognitive exercise is an important method of gaining information. What does introspection mean? Can you use any skills to make an educated guess here? Let's see, we got one vote for A. And let's just move on over to the next slide. So introspection, I've bold put, oh, hang on. So going back to this, the um, process that you can use here is just breaking down the word. So in as in inside and inspection, which is in the word introspection or inspection, which is like an examination. So it's an inside examination, which a process of examining one's own thoughts and ideas makes sense here. Guessing the internal motivation wouldn't quite make sense just because it's not like an internal, that's more of an external, that's a more of an external way to describe it. And there's also a process of retrieving long-term memory in the brain, which doesn't quite make sense either. A method of examining learned information. That one could work. You could guess that one falsely just because of the word examination kind of tipping it off, but that can at least get you a 50% chance if you can eliminate these other two answers. So next question, the American Psychological Associa Association or the APA has developed ethical principles urging investigators to A, avoid the use of monetary incentives in recruiting people to participate in research, B, forewarn potential research participants hypothesis that the research will test, C, avoid the manipulation of independent variables in research by involving human participants, D, explain the research to get the participants after the study has been completed. Or E, explain the difficulty level of each of research endeavors while maintaining validity. Can you use any skills to form an educated guess here? Let's see, we have one vote for letter A. Any other guesses for this? One for A, one for C. Okay, so explaining this. The answer is actually D. In this scenario, there was nothing you could have done. You might have guessed it was a longer answer or one of the answers starting with a void since those kind of stick out. But it's actually explain the research to the participant after the study has been completed. So the point made by this is, so it's not a foolproof strategy. Shown by the previous questions, the tips will not always work. You should use these tips as a kind of second measure if you're unsure of an answer, not as a substitute for knowing the content. You can get by decently by guessing, but it's not gonna get you passing on the AP exam. So a few other helpful tips. If time is running out, bubble the same letter. We talked about this earlier, but it's so important to stress and emphasize that. You have to make sure that you get something in and that just increases your chances of getting an answer correct. And don't skip a bubble, bubble. You can mark it or something, but just don't leave it completely blank. It'll lead you to be off the Scantron and just make a note to come back so you don't completely forget it. As a conclusion, knowing the content is the number one priority. There's nothing more important than that. And these skills are just a second measure once again. But developing test taking skills can help you when you're stuck and uncertain of a certain situation. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about that or any tip, additional tips that they'd like to share or even anything that they'd like to go further into? Okay. Well, in that case, thank you for coming and just send me a message on Instagram. Instagram is emily.pedrazi. If you need any additional help with content, I should be able to message you right away. Yeah. Thank you for attending.